<laughs> just went by in a blink. I had a great time. <laughs> That's what I really know. I'm a lucky man. I have, I told you, I felt like Forrest Gump on occasion for finding myself in certain places and situations at times that I would go, wow, how did I get here? You know, <laughs> I was the smell of SNL in the beginning. So, you know, the beginning days. So maybe Lorne won't like that, but <laughs> he has to admit it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, my name is Jack <laughs> and, uh, and I am, uh, Bronx born, Bronx, New York boy. Uh, my, gra my father was a New York City cop. My grandfather was the chief brewmaster for Dutch Schultz the, and Oni Madden, the Bronx beer barons in the 30s. So I've always been a little conflicted <laughs> with <laughs> various choices in life. And uh, as it turns out, this is my 50th anniversary of, uh, you know, being interested in cannabis cultivation and cultivating. And uh, uh, I think it's probably a good time to try and become comfortable sharing. And I'm comfortable here in Oregon because it might be one of the first places I've ever been where I can let those eyes in the back of my head get a little sleep. I have a, a very horticultural background as a landscape architect. Uh, I graduated from a very prestigious forestry school with a lot of horticultural training and... Uh, general love of the outdoors you know as a kid i knew the name of every animal and <laughs> bird and butterfly and all that stuff and uh this was something that uh you know at some point in our lives became became in the you know became obvious that everybody was smoking uh i when i was in high school nobody smoked it was before anybody yeah, I had ever even seen any cannabis for the most part, except some beatniks, you know. And uh, uh, when I heard that uh, Afghanistan was the place, actually, it was something Tim Leary said, uh, and it was that there was L or there was <laughs> there was cannabis in Afghanistan that was like LSD in its in its you know in its uh, power to uh, give you to get you high and to in, uh, uh, possibly uh, increase your consciousness or whatever you want. Um, and uh, so I was fascinated by that. I have other friends that, one friend that had been there that told me, well, you like growing this stuff. He said, you should see these plants there. Well, I was there within six months and I made four journeys there. And of course, I, uh, I am now here uh, 42 odd years later, because this was in the very early 70s ostensibly before uh, the, guy the guy who founded the Sensi Seed Company in Holland was there. Uh, I was there probably five years before him. <laughs> so there you go, I said it. <laughs> um, and, you know, what he did is the same thing I did, but I didn't have a company that was buying and that was selling seeds to the public. I was doing this in the dark, you know, in my own, in my own place, in my own time. I would love to put my sunglasses on so I don't get too squinty at my age. There, is that okay, folks? Down in Redondo Beach and Hermosa Beach, I, I took a, a, a little sabbatical from my lifeguard job in college <laughs> and uh, went out to California in this in, in 66 and uh, you know it was first that was the first place I was introduced to cannabis to smoke and uh, 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 I continued to grow a few plants for myself after that when I when I returned back east, and uh, it just uh, it just blossomed. I never stopped. I just never stopped. Even if I had a, a a relatively straight job, I always had that as my hobby, and I was more interested in it, especially once I found out about those special Afghan plants. And it wasn't just any Afghan plants that I was looking at at that point. It was, uh, it was the plants that were used to make hashish. And, and so it was, uh, well, I hopped in an old Russian taxi cab in Kabul with a couple of friends of mine. And the driver was an Afghan that was recommended to me by my host over there. And we took off and drove up the old road through the Hindu Kush mountains. Uh, I stood on the heads of those Buddhas before the Taliban blew them up. 
And, uh, uh, you know, that's where Genghis Khan marched in. That's where Buddhism actually, I think, got its start is up in that neck of the woods. Uh, and and that, was the, that is the source of, in my opinion, the world's finest cannabis. Uh, it was the source of all the hand-pressed surfboards and cookies that were, you know, that were around in those days. Uh, very limited production of those things, always plenty of bulk product. But uh, I was interested in the seeds. I wasn't interested in the business as such right there. Uh, and so I have simply, uh, every year, religiously, no, and, and sometimes more than once a year, very seldom indoors, and uh, never with cloning, by the way. I think I cloned some plants once. Uh, I'm not... I, you know, I know that somebody wants to make a thousand, fl- you can do tissue culturing now, you could do anything to make copies of something. Uh, I think with me, it was, I never wanted to become bored. I'll take these off again. <laughs> I never wanted to become bored with, uh, with, with the process. I was always amused at, 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 at like what would develop by the breeding program. I didn't want anything to be same, 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 same all the time. I realized the value in that for people in the business who want a reliable product that's the same as the one they got the last time and stuff like that. But these plants do have, these particular plants have a wonderful habit of, of, uh, of showing different sides of themselves. They, they, they end up, they're all still the same geno, genotype but they, that's why we're calling some of them Afghanica, because they are the original land plants, the land race plants, that have been you know, allowed to be tweaked just a little and, and, and crossed with members of their own genome or their own genome that just by their own nature create little variations among themselves. I showed you that one, that one plant over there that's growing a completely alien branch, a sport. You know, if you cut that and cloned it, you could have a thousand plants like that. But I guess the variety being the spice of life, uh, and as long as it was in this vein, this very narrow vein, uh, I went up there into those parts and uh, was given the seeds for this, which I I got them four or five times up there. After, maybe after 1976, um, I decided that I, I was starting to see plants in, not there. In, uh, this is the area around Mazari Sharif uh, uh, and up in that part of Afghanistan. And uh, if you go a little further back towards Pakistan, the plants are a little smaller, shorter. They're very different. There's, some of them have thin leaves. Um, it, it's not, it, it's not the, uh, the, the one that I wanted. The thick leaves are for resin production so that, so that they hold more trichomes. Capitate stock track. <laughs> I was a maniac. Uh, not a maniac, but, you know, so interested in something, you know, uh, so uh, completely wrapped up in it. It was the time. It was, you know, I was, a, you know, we were raging hippies. Uh, you know, we to go someplace like that, to take off and go to that part of the world, uh, completely out of your comfort zone. I brought, I've had people go over there with me that, that, that wanted to go home the day they got there because it was just so culturally overwhelming that they, they you know, the food's different, the, the, the food's different, the smells are different, uh, everything's different. And, and, and that was the, nov- the adventure of this was, plus the fact that we were, I was able to buy beautiful carpets and, and beautiful lapis. And we had a little bit of a trade business, you know, going with crazy homemade, crazy clothes that we shipped back and stuff like that. Um, and the whole thing became just a great adventure. And then when I realized that I had something that was unique back in this country, there are a few other folks, I'm sure, that, that, that started possibly back then. But there were no seed companies then. All this, all this remains in the dark. And then, you know, there started to be seed companies. And then you realized what you had really had some, some significance. But because of the laws... Basically, it had to wait till right now to, to actually be able to express itself fully. And so here I am, you know, 50 years later. Uh, uh, thank you, Sammy and maybe Harry. Uh, and there's some people that'll know who I'm talking about. I had the adventures of a lifetime there. Where else can you go like 
back to the Bible and then shoot a machine gun into the hillside next to the, you know, a stall in the bazaar. <laughs> Where else can you watch uh, people uh, throw a dead goat around on horseback, you know, as their national sport, puskashi, <laughs> yeah, goat dragging. If you ever want to see that, watch that 1980-something movie, The Horseman, with Jack Palance and Omar Sharif. <laughs> it's it's a beauty. Um, uh, it was basically it was a you know for somebody that was born in the Bronx, wow, that was that was some high adventure. You know, uh, uh, horseback riding up in those high mountains around the lakes of the Kings, Bondi Amir, and and uh, you know it truly was like being back in the Bible. Well, like Space Brothers, the sharing of cultural things gets you even even despite the language barriers is when you realize that everybody's really just one person. It's the only country that I've ever heard of or been to where it, it, technically, being a, being a Muslim country, uh, you know, alcohol was tolerated when in the, in, back when there was a king and, and before the religious fundamental movement took hold a great deal. But as far as cannabis smoking was concerned, it was it was accepted. And, you know, I'm not quite sure what the Quran or anything says about it. Uh, I know that some people say that some books forbid intoxication, but they don't um, or, or intoxicants. But uh, I'm, I'm not really saying this right. Uh, they had no qualms about smoking as opposed to drinking. And one of the an anecdote involving that that shows how widespread it was in that in 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 the city even uh, was that uh, our driver on that trip that aforementioned trip of mine <laughs> careening around mountain roads with no you know with eating dirt with no guardrails and bus loads full of people you know sitting on top of the bus quite literally chickens and goats on the bus uh, our driver it was Ramadan when we were there. So everybody had to behave all day. They couldn't eat, smoke, drink, or anything else after sunrise, and they had to wait until sunset to do it again. He took us on this on this on this journey up to Mazar. Uh, he, he but he wanted to get someplace by. It took a while. He because we were going on the old roads, and it was in an old Russian Volga Volga uh, a taxi cab. It looked like an old Studebaker Lark, and the, the, he was taking us, you know, at the behest of our host, an Afghan an Afghan, uh, who, who knew he, he would make sure we came to no harm. And, and it was where we, we had to stop several nights on the way. And it was, that's what he kept, you know, by the end of the afternoon, he was really wanting to get to where he could stop the vehicle, you know, and, 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 and chill for the night and have his, have his pipe. The growing up in that part, uh, you know, we were at that point, we weren't mountain climbing at that point. We went on trail rides and, and there were small patches here and there. And, and I, I had my host in Kabul had a huge garden of the right stuff right in Kabul because everybody there who's, you know, who's not a nomad or something. And if they can afford it, they have a very walled existence. You walk down a street, it's nothing but walls with little doors in them. Whereas the second you go through that door, you know, paradise you know in terms of in that person's own opinion beautiful walled gardens you know uh, uh the word for garden in in i'm not sure if it's pathan or or if it's dari is golzar g-u-l-z-a-r and uh, that was even a hotel that i had stayed at once but up in that part of the country in the northwestern part of afghanistan the uh most of the growing was done in a very, a very agricultural way it wasn't really secret it was done uh, uh, in we're, we're in river valleys, much like this place. That's that's one of the things that always grabbed me about here. You're in this. You're in the flat lower valley that has plenty of water, whereas you, in, instead of up on the mountains, you know, where where it was more difficult to do. It was it was irrigated with ditches and gate, the little wooden gates, and diverted from the river. So all the greenness in a country that's so dry and rugged. Was, was mostly in the lower valleys, you know, along the, the, the river plain. And up there, uh, you know, there's, uh, there was quite a bit of agriculture. I mean, there was still, you know, oxen, you know, you know, threshing grain, just like in the Bible. You know, it was basically like the Bible, you know. 
you didn't have to worry then because because the king had just left and you know and his brother-in-law kind of had a little coup his name was Muhammad Dawood and everybody called him Kojak because he was as bald as a billiard ball and he, his face was on the Afghani money and he looked just like Telly Savalas. <laughs> so even the population, the local the population called him. But uh, there, there was no danger. The only danger there might have been was if you were really stupid and went into, you know, the raw, real, some really, you know, uh, stupid place. Uh, you might, there, and if you were alone and you didn't have a guide who could threaten or pull a name out of the hat and make them run away, because a lot of that going on. You know, there's a lot of people with clout that, you know, all you, the, at the mention of their name, you know, trouble can disappear. It was bandits would be about all you would have ever had to worry about or, you know, or going off a cliff with no guardrail, <laughs> which you can't really account for that. That stuff happened. Um, and uh, uh, so there was no danger in that. I acquired the seeds from the boss. That's all I can say. <laughs> He's a, I, you know, he knew which seeds I wanted exactly. He didn't. He knew I didn't want the run of the mill, you know. And he was arguably, you know, one of the big shots in this arena. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and after a bunch of running around that country, I did discover although not in that area. That area was, was, was the place where the very finest, in my opinion, since the beginning of time, no one used those plants for fiber. Or basically, they weren't grown for fiber. They were grown for their, for their drug content. Uh, and uh, so it, it's the bullseye of the cannabis plant on earth, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and, and the seeds were given freely, and uh, lots of advice. Most people think that uh, the cannabis indica plant is a very short, stocky plant, rarely over five or six feet high. Uh, and the thing is, this what we're calling Afghanica are the little tweaks to that that type, whether genotype, that that these plants actually have will actually go to 12 feet or more given enough time. If these had been started two months earlier, they'd be, they'd be up there and there'd be no room in between them. So uh, that's one of the advantages to, to these over if, on a commercial level over the smaller, uh, the smaller little fat types, which don't tolerate, which seem to like it better indoors because they don't tolerate moisture as as well they get moldy and and, and stuff so th those are and the size makes it possible to grow them indoors these plants have pretty much always been uh, very difficult to grow indoors due to the illicit nature of indoor growing in most states in this country um and uh there's a good reason for that actually and that is they really smell <laughs> they smell so strong that every one of your neighbors knows exactly what you're doing you know, every one of the tenants, if it's not a, a single family residence, knows what you're doing. It's 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 amazing. Um, you know, everybody always used to say, what happened here? Did your dog get sprayed by a skunk or something? You know, and that's that that's the general that was the general uh, thing that people would say at when they first encountered this aroma. Um these plants also get a, a you know marvelous fall colors like 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 maple trees and and everything else. Um, but they are uh, they are special, and I hope everybody you know gets a chance to uh, to do this. I am a firm believer in breeding from seed. Uh, I can I my seeds are very true breeding. Uh, if you go to a company like Burpee or something, they won't they they won't give you a special name or variety or ownership type of thing, uh, unless it will breed true on its own for oh like ten years or something like that. Well, these have bred true for forty years, and um, uh, there's no there's never been you know there's never been uh, a neighbor in the woodpile. Uh, there's, uh, 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 
breeding from seed, like I said before, it gives you that, you know, that, that variety that, that you, that, that I have sought to keep me from getting bored. <laughs> that's, and that's my, that was my job. I was the breeder, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, I found a lot of amusement in that, you know, and, and, and that's what, and to this day, that's what I would prefer to have been be known as as anything else is uh, is 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 a breeder. I've had gardens all over the place that you know other people may have had to watch over them, but you know I was the genetic material in there, and uh, you know on on occasion uh, you know I've been you know hands on as a consultant and. Uh, uh, I always had the final say. Uh, I know, in other words, for for 42 years, I know who the mommy and the daddy are of everything, and I could prove it. I have a, a legendary pedigree, <laughs> and uh, uh, so so um, I, I don't have any uh, fears that it had ever gone off the track. You know, uh, always done, always done. Uh, far, far away from anybody else's material. At the beginning of SNL and, and, and all that, you know, it became obvious that there was something special going on. And, and I, you know, I had a lot of friends. My, you know, you can have, you can be completely unknown and still have, you know, like a little fan club. <laughs> you know, <laughs> for what it's worth. And, 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 by word of mouth and all that, you know, uh, no, obviously no advertising. It's the first time I'm here, folks. And, and, um, and then, uh, you know, I had, uh, I was invited, obviously, uh, I was, uh, you know, begged to go to Mendocino back before these plants were common there. And uh, there, I don't even know if there were any there. And my friend who lived there, uh, you know, said, you gotta, you gotta do this with me. You gotta do this. And then, uh, so I went out there, and this is in, oh, 77, maybe 78, something like that. Um, and we produced like several thousand seedlings, and we gave them all out to people, and we got nothing back. <laughs> oh, a hippopotamus, like, slept on top of the garden, or they were stolen, or they all died, or my mother's sick, or whatever. Um so at that point, I decided I'm going to just, I'm not going to do this. But what it did do was allow a, some of the very first, I will now call it Afghanica, but indica, cannabis indica, which no one had out there at that time. It allowed that to spread throughout northern parts of California. And I may not be the only one that ever did that, but I am, one, I, to my knowledge, I am. And uh, that's how a lot of that stuff got there today. The CBD and things like that, well, you know, that's, that's a, a, a relatively recent development, although I think in Israel and places like that, they've been working on that uh, very hard for, for way longer than a lot of the, the people here. Nobody talked about that back then. There was no discussions of, you know, of any of that. You know, it was ba basically the, the goal at first was, to breed something that would get you as high as uh, as as was humanly possible, <laughs> and still still be able to well maybe not function I don't know but uh, it it had a different purpose uh, it, that's what it was for as far as being medicinal well it makes me less grumpy you know I mean <laughs> I I I like myself better <laughs> and I don't know uh, how other people feel about that. But I think there's a lot of other people that are glad I smoke, too. <laughs> you know, back, I don't want to say in the old days or when, I, when the dinosaurs roamed, but, but uh, some kinds made you a little sleepy and some kinds made you jump around a little. I always wanted, I was always going for the, you know, like in the old Frankenstein movie, when, when, they send, when he opens the doors in the top of the building. It was always like, Igor, send up the kites, you know? And I always wanted to have the doors in the top of my head open. I didn't want to get stoned just to up here. <laughs> I wanted it to go all the way up and out. I'm very happy with 
what's going on right now. This is it, to, for me. I have found people here that that I'm so comfortable with. Like I said, uh, the, uh, the I love outdoor sports. I love fishing and and all that. I used to hunt. I don't hunt so much anymore, but fishing I still do. Um, and uh, uh, I find myself very comfortable here uh, with people like me who are very accepting of me and who actually like think I'm okay <laughs> I'm 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 a bit of a cynic after after a number of years about lots of things I'm also an optimist about other things I figured how in the world could could people not realize that this should be okay and I've always thought that way and finally you know like here in Oregon I mean you guys acted early on it and uh you have continued to improve the climate here for someone who wished to participate and uh i know you're uh, i know they're trying to get a little bit under control and stuff like that and 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 the possibility of working in a legal you know uh environment where once again i'll say it again where those eyes in the back of my head get a chance to rest once in a while um it proved too difficult for me. To, proved too difficult an opportunity for me to turn down at this point. Who knows what'll happen later? You know, uh, I could get run over by a truck tomorrow. But I'm here for now, and I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, I know it's not legal everywhere by any means, but I'm not anywhere right now. I'm here, and 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 that's why I'm here, because I can continue on this path un until somebody decides that they maybe they don't want to do it anymore. Uh, you know, but but it's it's enabling me to 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 fulfill a bit of a of a, a fantasy, you know, that that's been going on since I went to Afghanistan. I was so um, enamored of by adventures and and by you know the fact that I was able to to do something with my education that may not have exactly been what it was intended for, but that sure suited my fancy, and the mere fact that. These plants had the key that unlocked the keyhole in my brain. There is a lot of names for plants. There are millions of hybrids and crosses and everything, and that's all well and good. But, you know, one thing, and I'll say this, and this is not, uh, this is my opinion, is that there's been, uh, there's a general uh, median kind of product out there that, whether it smells a little different than this one or looks or, or tastes a little different than this one, the results uh, uh, physically, the, 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 meant the results in your brain are reasonably similar uh, throughout the, uh, this whole strata of things. And things that rise above that are, they exist, but they're few and far between. I wanted, you know, something that was the most powerful, psychedelic, possible cannabis product. And, and that's what I was aiming for. Everybody, I think, at one point thought, wow, I could make some money doing this. But, but that, wasn't, that wasn't possible, like, for most people. Uh, it, and so it was done more as a hobby for most people in the beginning and stuff. And um, I did it out of my sheer love of gardening, uh, you know, I, uh, of all kinds, and the fact that my education was all about that stuff. And... and um, it certainly, uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, I've always been like the mad scientist. <laughs> you know? I've always had friends, you know, at various part times in my life, everybody I knew grew, you know, even though it was illegal. Everybody had a few of their own somewhere or something like that. Uh, and, and, but the reaction I've always gotten to this particular product was nothing less than amazing. So, you know, that, that's why I figured it, it was worth following through on, you know, and, and, to, and to preserve it and, if possible, improve it, uh, tweak it a little bit here and there, but, but um, still able to uh, produce the original land race. I've actually sprouted seed, that this actual seed, not the genetics of the seed, but the seed itself was over 24 years old. So I've, I've, I've actually been able to, I've actually been able to take, for lack of a better way to phrase it, great, 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 great,
great, great, great, great, great, great, great, great, great, great, great, great, great granddaughter. I don't know how cool that is to say, but also the reverse have like the great, 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 great grandson mate with great, 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 great old grandmother. So the genetic code of this is reinforced like with really old genetics occasionally so that there's never uh, much deviation from you know the original the original intent there may be one or two guys that i've crossed paths with in my life not in this country but in that far off place that may have had a similar intent and that have done something like that whether they still are or not or whether that was only in the past i don't know i hear rumors about you know, a few older guys still lurking in the hills <laughs> around the state. <laughs> and I'd love if any of them are still alive to say hi someday. There's been a lot of people that have tried really hard to get these away from me <laughs> on numerous occasions. <laughs> and uh, somehow they've been kept at bay over all these years because no one else has these particular seeds. These particular seeds have been hoarded by a, a grumpy old man, me. <laughs> so uh, between, between being so enamored of, of, of the plant itself and what it represented, also the anti-establishment nature of it back in those days when we were all flaming hippies, um, you know, uh, it, it was, you know, it was, it was, we all were feeling our oats and, 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 uh, you know, we always, we, of course we thought, you know, we were going to change the world. Well, you know, it's just a slow process. This change doesn't happen overnight. And I think it's actually has been changed here in Oregon. So, uh, you know, that's why I'm here. And, uh, I'm going to continue my scientific explorations and I'm going to keep loving it. Would the plants be proud of me? Well, I still don't have the answer to that, <laughs> and uh, uh, I think these. I think that I think that my friends back over uh, in Afghanistan, if they were still alive after all the horrible, horrible conflicts that have occurred there, I think they. I think this would make them smile, and I do believe that uh, that if a plant could talk, it would say, "Wow, thanks, Captain." <laughs>